Uh, well, uh, I think uh, most, uh, most of the people know who you are, and uh, I just want to mention that uh, we were doing it this day because we finally found the books that you sent to us. Some uh, uh, 40 books uh, uh, from your, uh, the publications you've been doing, and we're really thankful uh, for the uh, donation. And uh, we'll uh, review some of the books. Uh, we'll we'll uh, scan them uh, with our camera here uh, to, so people can see the uh, length and breadth of the uh, contribution. But uh, welcome again to Chicago and to the, the whole world. We're going to Florida, we're going to uh, Italy, uh, to Rome, and uh, we're everywhere. Uh, so, uh, Professor Gaetano Cipolla, take it away. Buongiorno. Buongiorno a tutti. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, good. I'm so glad to see so many of you. Uh, uh, I am obviously uh, a professor of Italian. I retired uh, from uh, teaching at St. John's University uh, about 11 years ago, and I've been devoting the rest of my, uh, my time to uh, promoting uh, the Sicilian language and culture uh, in this country. I, I, I presume you know who I am and what I've done. But perhaps I can tell you, I, I don't know what, uh, what this, what I should be saying at this point, but maybe you, you can ask me questions afterwards. But I can tell you what we have done uh, since 1979. Uh, that's when Arba Sicula was founded. And this is our 41st year of uh, activities. Uh, we have produced uh, 43 volumes of Arba Sicula, which is uh, a unique journal in Sicilian and English. And we also have, uh, uh, we publish a newsletter, which is called Sicilia Parra, uh, mostly in English, except for two pages of poetry uh, translated into English uh, and Sicilian. In addition to that, we have promoted Sicilian uh, culture in this country uh, through my uh, uh, publishing house, which is called Legas. We have so far published uh, about 140 books. Um, most of them, if not all, not all of them, maybe about 80% of them uh, are on Sicilian subjects. Uh, I. Uh, we have done a lot of things that uh, haven't been done even in Sicily. For example, uh, we have uh, produced uh, a dictionary of Sicilian English and English Sicilian by Joseph Bellestri. Uh, we have done uh, several grammars, one of which is uh, by uh, uh, John Bonner called Introduction to Sicilian, which I edited and, and helped with. And then uh, I actually did uh, another book, which is very important. It's called Learn Sicilian, Baramo Lu Siciliano, which is actually the first, the first uh, textbook, college textbook uh, to teach Sicilian and learn Sicilian. And I'm glad to tell you that we have actually uh, uh, done three editions of it. We sold over 1,500 copies of the book. And um, we actually had uh, a, friend of our, a friend of mine uh, who teaches at the University of La Manuba in Tunis uh, do a, an Italian version of it. In other words, he simply translated the English into, into Italian because uh, a couple of years ago, the Sicilian region decided finally that they were going to teach Sicilian in schools. Uh, it hasn't happened yet, but it was a, a good start. And we hoped uh, to have at least one good uh, textbook to be used there. But I must say that the book is more successful in America than it is in Sicily uh, because they haven't really started doing uh, the teaching in the schools. Uh, 
uh, the, the textbook is actually being used at the University of, uh, of uh, Pennsylvania uh, in Philadelphia. And at, at several courses uh, that people teach on in Sicily on their own without uh, uh, the uh, government being involved. So I have uh, done a number of other things. Uh, as I said, we've published 140 books. Uh, my, uh, I think my, my most successful little book is called What Makes a Sicilian, which has sold over 25,000 copies, together with another little book that deals with Italy, and that is called What Italy Has Given to the World, yeah, yeah. which also has sold Oh, oh, over okay. 25,000 copies. Frank has a copy of it. He's showing it. Do uh, you want me to? Oh, yes. Oh, you have it. Good. <laughs> uh, some people actually, that, that book was published, uh, was started uh, when, I, when I did it. I actually was supposed to give a lecture to my Italian club at school. And really, I didn't know what uh, I was going to talk about. And, and uh, since I was a, a Star Trek fan, I always believed in, uh, you know, uh, going on time. So I, I said to myself, what would the world be today if Italy never emerged from the bottom of the sea? And, uh, and answered it. Uh, in, in a funny way, but actually documenting all the stuff in the, in the notes. And then it became a, a, a booklet, which was very successful. In fact, Niaf at one point actually would uh, give it free to anybody who became a member of, of, of Niaf. And uh, so we sold a, a, a ton of copies. I didn't make that, I should be rich, but I didn't make that many because I, I, the book only cost four dollars, and for them, I actually gave it to them at fifty percent discount or something like that. So it's basically yeah. Every Italian American should have one in their back pocket. Uh, you, have, I'm sorry, you have one. Yeah, I got one. Good, good. And the other one is what makes a Sicilian. Uh, recently, have been. Um, uh, publishing some of the essays that, that are in my book called Siciliana, Studies on the Sicilian Ethos and Literature. And there's a, an online magazine called Italics. I don't know if any of you have seen it. Uh, uh, I haven't seen it. Have you? No, I haven't. Oh, well, you should. Uh, it's, a, it's a great mag magazine. It's online. And uh, they it's have been... Journal italics, yes. <laughs> italics, yes. So they have been publishing some of the stuff that I did in my book. I mean, I it doesn't matter to me, but I did one on one on long, the very long articles, uh, and they've been publishing, and they they have been read by many many people because I've gotten a lot of uh, response from it. One is called the Jews in Sicily, which is a uh, uh, an article that I did a long time ago and has been very, very well received uh, by many people. In fact, uh, one, uh, one fellow who is actually a producer wanted to do a, a documentary based on that. Uh, right now he's looking for funds. <laughs> so I'm not sure how far I will get. But anyway, that one, the second one was, I believe, the second one was Sicily and Greece. Sicily and Greece, which was a look at, at, at the two countries, basically, because most people don't know that Sicily contributed a great deal to Greece. They always think that the road, to, uh, the road of culture traveled from Sicily to Greece. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, traveled from Greece to Sicily. And my point is that Sicily sent back a lot of culture. Most people don't know, if you ask them, most people don't know that Archimedes is Sicilian. They think he's Greek. Well, he was Greek Sicilian, but the Sicilians wanted to be known as Sicilian, even as far 
back as the fourth century before Christ. So that's the second. And the third one is called the, the Muslims in Sicily. And um, my friend, uh, uh, who is the editor of Lumie di Sicilia, uh, Mario Gallo, I don't know if you ever heard of them, of him. Mario Gallo publishes in, in Florence, publish a, publishes a, a monthly journal called Lumie di Sicilia after Pirandello. And uh, he decided to actually, he decided actually to, to republish those three articles in a booklet that you can have if you want. Uh, perhaps I can send them to, to you. If you send me your email, I can actually send you the, the Italian version of it. I can also send you the English. I can also send it to you. In fact, it's very interesting because my friend, as I said, Mario Gallo said, listen, I want to publish your articles. Uh, and I said, well, they're in English. No, oh, no, I have them in Italian. Apparently, uh, Google translates almost automatically into Italian everything oh, that, the, that the journal uh, publishes. And the editor didn't even know that. And I was so upset. Because you know Google does a, a creditable job, but it's not a good translation. Translation. There was all kinds of mistakes, all kinds of ridiculous errors. Uh, so it took me about three days to actually co recorrect the Italian translation before he could publish it. And I was very upset with the man. I said, "Listen, you. The next time you you publish something in Italian." Please pass it by. Let me have a copy. I will correct it for you. Uh, so we're not going to be embarrassed, either one. But he didn't even know. Artificial intelligence is coming, and it, it will be perfect. I mean, but it's, uh, it still makes a lot of mistakes, I can tell you. Because I, you know, as a, when I was teaching, I, I, I taught actually a course on the art of translation. So I, I'm a translator, basically. Uh, so I know I know how to do it, but uh, I always discouraged my students to actually from from um, from using Google Translation. But now I've actually I see that they've made uh, enormous strides, and you know you have to still you still have to read what what they say, but uh, because they they make all kinds of funny mistakes uh, sometimes. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. But anyway, those those three things uh, they, uh, I've been published, and if you afterwards, you, uh, Dominic, if you send me everybody's e emails, I can I can uh, share them, share the articles with them. Okay, I will. Uh, and are there more Sicilians outside of Sicily than inside of Sicily, and what does that mean? Yes, there are quite a few more Sicilians outside than inside. Uh, Sicily has about five million people now, five million people. But outside of Sicily, uh, in the United States alone, uh, I've seen different uh, percentages. Most people say that most of the, the Italian Americans in this country, maybe about 40% are of its Sicilian origin. 40%, about that, or more or less. Which means uh, if you count that there's 28 million uh, Italian Americans in this country, it's quite a lot. So, did Italians they, are everywhere. Did they go to uh, Australia, for instance? Oh, or yes. Is there any country they didn't go to that uh, Italians went to? I think Sicilians went to, the, will probably go to the moon first. <laughs> <laughs> And you know, there's a Sicilian, uh, uh, Sicilian astronaut who went into space, has been into space for uh, six months and just came, came down. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Yes, so a Sicilian, Sicilian uh, astronaut. Uh, the name is escaped me right now. But uh, we actually wrote an article on him. But he appeared on TV just uh, two days ago. Uh, oh. Well, but uh, in, our, in Australia, Australia is probably uh, well, has lots of Sicilians. We have members of Arbasicula in Australia. 
Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, uh, we had a member, uh, a fellow named Tony Pagone, whose name is actually Gaetano Pagone, who uh, was a, a member of the Supreme Court uh, in Sydney, I believe. Uh, so well, we have other, we have about 20 different uh, people in Australia who are members of our Reticula. So, so we have them all over the world, primarily, but mostly in every state of the union, we have one. We have people in Alaska, we have people in Hawaii, we have one, <laughs> uh, maybe in the 90s, I went, I went to give a lecture at the University of Sicily. Uh, and for, uh, it was, a, I think, for, for a week. For a week, we were there. And when I arrived there, there were three people waiting for me at the airport. Three Sicilians. <laughs> Every, they're everywhere. Uh, yes. how would, what is the major difference between a Sicilian and an Italian? Uh, that's, that, that's going to take a long, long time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Luca Parmitano, oh. that's his name, right. <laughs> Luca Parmitano. That's okay. right. Uh, that's a difficult question. I primarily, uh, you know, Sicilians, uh, I, I don't like to get into the idea that Sicilians don't think they are Italian, because by now, after 170 years of uh, being Italian, we are Italian. There's no way, two ways about it. But if you ask, uh, if you ask anybody who is Sicilian, if you ask anybody who is Sicilian in this country, they they will. If you ask them, where are you, they will say they're Sicilian. So that somehow the belonging to the Sicilian uh, island uh, of Sicily is very important to them. Because Sicily, for 3,000 years, has always had kind of independent independence. They have, as you know, they have a, a, a statute of independence or semi-autonomy from Italy. Sicily was the first, the first, first uh, uh, region, uh, region of Italy, of Italy. The, the first region of Italy to have a, a semi-independent or semi-autonomous uh, statute. Which, by the way, I translated into Sicilian. And into English as well, uh, for the first time. Uh, and Sicily is the constitution. That statute was signed before the uh, constitution of Italy, which was signed in 1948, the new one. And the Sicilian statute was signed a few months prior to that. So Sicilians have a great like, like all people who live on an island have a feeling of belonging to that island. And take the Irish. The Irish have probably the same kind of attachment to, to their island. And Sicily, Sicilians have a great attachment to Sicily. And they, uh, they don't like to be away from it. Uh, and they, even though when they're there, they probably are, <laughs> always complain about everything else. What do you think the future of uh, Sicilian uh, American or Sicilian uh, uh, world culture is going to be like? Um, well, you know, we um, about 60 years ago, Somebody said, you know, Sicilian language is within 30 years will be gone. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, I'm glad to say that it hasn't happened. But Sicilians have a great attachment. Some, one, I can quote someone who actually said that uh, Sicilians are more, are more jealous of their language than they are of their wives, which actually <laughs> which is, uh, uh, goes a long way. <laughs> uh, so Sicilian, as far as I can tell, will evolve, like all languages evolve. It will not disappear because it's, they, they will have, um, they will put Sicilian into, uh, into their Italian 
speaking. Uh, so that uh, the language will evolve, it will remain, it will not be quite the same as it was a uh, hundred years ago. Uh, but things change, it's a, an evolution. So languages are living, living things and they change. Uh, our our uh, efforts uh, at Art Basicula has been basically to provide a kind of a koine, uh, a way of actually writing Sicilian uh, so that everybody who uses it can understand it. Because as you know, in Sicily, it's, it's like a microcosm. Macrocosm. It, there's so many different areas, each of which will have a different way of pronouncing things. So the way that our Basicula has been uh, working is to provide a kind of a steady, uh, reasoned approach to the way you write the language. Most people in Sicily will write it in a different way because they're not actually used to, to writing it. Sicilian, you, you may know that Sicilian, most people believe they're actually an oral language, that there is no, an oral language, which is not true. Sicilian was the first language ever used for poetry. For the first 150 years, and this is very important. For the first 150 years, Dante himself said that everything that was written in poetry was written in Sicilian. And not only people who are, in, who are from Sicily, all over, the, all over the country, even though there was no country, most people on the Italic Peninsula, for example, would, if they wanted to write poetry, they would write it in a language that was, if not exactly Sicilian, was close to Sicilian, as close as possible. And this is something new. Most people actually, uh, most people actually believe uh, uh, what happened is that after Frederick II died in 1250, uh, the importance of the, uh, of the Ghibellines sort of faded and somehow the importance of, of the empire faded so that Sicily and Sicilian became second, secondary. Oh. And that's where the Florence and all the other the cities of the North became more important. Dante, Petrarca, Boccaccio, the, the great uh, writers of, uh, of the Middle Ages uh, who created the Florentine. But at the beginning, it was Sicilian. The Sicilians who started the, the canon for poetry. Uh, and so we have a very, important, a very long uh, and tradition of writing in Sicilian. They have great poets. Uh, Sicilian only became, uh, it's, it's, you know, this is very, very, not a very difficult thing, but it, it would take me, I don't know how long I have <laughs> to yeah. actually go through this. Uh, well, but I did want to say one thing about the idea of uh, of a verbal language. Sicilian is not an oral language. It is written, uh, Basicola is not the only one who writes in Sicilian. We have great writers like Giovanni Meli, Antonio Veneziano, a, a greatest poet of the Renaissance who wrote only in Sicilian because he didn't want to be a parrot, parroting other people's languages. He said Homer wrote in, in Greek. Uh, and then he cited other thing. I am Sicilian, therefore I should write in Sicilian. And he did that. So he made a statement because when you write in your own language, the language that you learn at your, at, at your mother's uh, your breast mother tongue. <laughs> is the language that actually allows you to express yourself much, much more uh, Correctly, and then other. <laughs> allora, so io dovevo scrivere, comunica si con Sicilia. Eh, conosco pure Senzio Mazza, che eh, Saro Pafumi, che lei conosce, diciamo. Saro Pafumi, I know him. E eh, eh, Senzio Mazza, quella che scrive poesie, poeta, che lei ha tradotto qualche poesia sua, mi sembra. Di Senzio Mazza. Enzo, Enzo Mazza, sì, I, I, published, I published his book. 
Exacto, sin más. I, I published a little book, which uh, unfortunately is out of print, because we sold out what we had, because most of the books I actually sent back to him. But we, uh, I have only a, a two copies left. Uh, he's a great poet and he keeps sending stuff. Uh, every time uh, that I uh, uh, go to, to Sicily every year, we, we do a tour, as you know, uh, except for last year because of the pandemic. Uh, would have been the 26th, 26th or 27th consecutive tour of Sicily. Uh, ah. every, so every time we go there, I write to uh, Mazza, who lives in uh, near Florence. Yes. Near yes. Florence, and then occasionally he goes down to uh, Lingua Grossa. Uh, and we've been uh, sort of making dates uh, uh, to meet one another, but it, so far it hasn't happened. Uh, either for, for some reason, because he's not well or whatever, but I, he's a great poet. And he is uh, from this town which produced uh, quite a few other great poets like Santo Cali and others. Sí. Yes, Santo Cali. Conozco, conozco. And Saro Pafumi, I published uh, some of the stuff, very interesting uh, uh, short pieces uh, that he sent me uh, about uh, well, uh, kind of wisdom. Uh, Don Salvatore, Don Salvatore. Don Salvatore, uh, Don San Comunque, sono un suo estimatore che leggo le traduzioni in siciliano perché io non parlo in inglese. Appena appena, diciamo. E mi fa piacere appunto che posso leggere. Adesso già ho letto un libro di quelle che lei ha mandato qua. Sì. Taormina, quello di Taormina. Sì, il mio Taormina. Bellissimo. Comunque, possiamo parlare in siciliano qualche volta. Beh, quando, vengo, quando, quando vengo a Chicago la prossima volta, uh, venga a trovarmi. Io ho solo venuto... Can I speak Italian? Sì. Sì, eh, parlo io. Quattro minuti. Uh, io sono venuto a Chicago varie volte e ho fatto delle conferenze al ristorante Monastero con Sacca. Uh, perché con il Dino Porto, Monastero e gli altri amici eh, sono stati molto molto gentili con, con me e almeno tre, tre, tre o quattro volte, adesso non ricordo esattamente quattro, la prossima volta che vengo a Chicago, se mi invitate vengo <laughs> sì, I even I told Dominic that I would be glad to come to uh, Casa Italia to give a lecture You're always welcome here. All Sei right. sempre Great. benvenuto. Va bene. Uh, I was looking over your books. Oh. And there are many different titles, but the one that struck me and that attracted me, and this tells a lot about me, is Sicilian oh. Erotica. <laughs> oh boy, is this a hot book. <laughs> I just browsed through it and wow. You had, uh, you had fun, I hope. Yeah, yeah. That, uh, that, that, that is the funniest book. Uh, that is the funniest book. Uh, and uh, you know, it's not, really, most people would think it's pornography. It is not pornography. It is basically uh, because you, it's, it's not meant to excite you uh, sexually. It's meant to to stimulate your, uh, your brain. Actually, it, it was a, a protest. Uh, it was written as a protest of, against, uh, you know, uh, hypocrisy and things uh, that were done in Sicily at that time. But it's a very funny book. Uh, Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, very good. Okay. Uh, one very big issue uh, here in Italian schools uh, is one that follows along the lines of the European recommendation, learning your mother tongue, uh, imparare la lingua madre. Sì. Now, uh, imparare la lingua madre, you made it very clear, and by the way, I um, manage a school that's in um, uh, an immigrant area with many people coming from the Meridione, the south of Italy. 
learning the mother tongue means learning basically the dialect, which is the language of the immigrants. Now, following along the line of the uh, book by Jim Cummings, Empowering Minority Students, which is much about the Head Start program, the um, Hispanic community in America having to learn the Italian, la the English language, um, by not forgetting their original language. Now, along this line, what do you think, or what would you think? Being a part within the autonomy uh, school system in Italy, we could do this very well. Uh, what would you think about teaching more dialects or the dialects that Sicily has multiple dialects? Um, the dialect that my family uh, spoke was Nicosiano, uh, different from the Catanese and Palermitano that I heard a lot um, uh, while I was living in Chicagoland because, uh, you know, we did uh, be, uh, hang around with, let's say, frequent the Italian community of all kinds. What, what would your opinion be about promoting this idea of expanding the dialects so that not so much that the standard Italian language would not be learned, but insofar that the standard Italian language can be uh, learned and acquired, uh, talking about language acquisition, um, in a better way because this would enable the linguistic intelligence and motivate, let's say, the students that would not even forget, you know, they're belonging to the uh, community of Southern Italy. But, I mean, it would empower them um, both in their dialect, belonging mostly to their grandparents, not their parents, and in improving the Italian language. For instance, I, I can make myself um, more clear on this. When I came to Italy, it was very difficult for me to learn the Italian language. I grew up in the United States, and when I came here at the age of 12, uh, I felt like asini mezzi suoni, you know, like a donkey uh, among sounds. And it took me a long time. And they were, you know, my teachers were insisting, you must speak the standard language. And I was saying, Porcina and not Porchetta. Porcina is what I'm wearing in my hair now. And everybody right. would laugh. But I'm aware that that Porcina would lead me to Porchetta. I, I could not have forgotten or done away with Porcina. Otherwise, I would not have learned Porchetta. So I would ask, like to ask um, your position on this, Professor Cipolla. Well, that is really a, a, an excellent question. Unfortunately, there's not too many answers that I can give you. Uh, obviously, uh, learning, uh, learning more than one language is actually an excellent thing. If you learn Sicilian and then you learn Italian, uh, one of the reasons for actually discouraging people in Sicily uh, from learning Sicilian is that somehow it will interfere with their knowledge of Italian or their acquiring of Italian, which is actually uh, false. Because, because uh, when you know, actually I always keep saying that knowing two or three or four languages improves your connections in the brain and you get Alzheimer's uh, much later. <laughs> In other words, it, it does help you uh, with that because you make all kinds of different connections. So that that the other, the other excuse for not learning Sicilian or discouraging people from learning Sicilian is because they have the wrong idea, the wrong idea what Sicilian is, and uh, they think it's an inferior language. Uh, and my in my career, I basically have tried to tell them that it is not an inferior language. It is a lot bigger as a language than Italian. I have a dictionary of Sicilian done by Giorgio Piccito, which is five volumes, each one this big, this big, uh, uh, a thousand pages each. So Sicilian, for example, will have, uh, if, if, if Italian will have a word for, say, uh, quercia, uh, the tree, an oak tree. 
Sicilian will have five different words for that thing. So that in, in a way, it is, uh, it is much richer uh, than Italian in terms of the scope of it. So not only that, they try to discourage uh, people from learning Sicilian. I'm talking about parents. I'm talking about the parents in Sicily who insist that the kids uh, do not speak Sicilian at the dinner table. Uh, I had a, I had a, a little uh, uh, example that I can give you. <laughs> when I was uh, at my cousin's house, both of whom were professors, one a professor of math, the other one a professor of, of Italian, and the young the grandchildren were coming in and out, and they insisted that they should speak Italian in the house. When later, after dinner was finished, we went outside, and the kids were on their own, and they were speaking Sicilian. So that somehow, Sicilian, as I said, will not disappear. It will not replace Italian. It will not replace Italian because it has changed so much. And on television, all you hear is Italian. Everything is in Italian. Uh, before, say, in, in 1900, you know, the 1900, when people didn't speak Italian, uh, I don't know if you know how many people actually when Italy was made in 1861, how many people actually spoke and understood Tuscan or what they know as the Italian language? You know, give me a figure of how many and what is the percentage of that? I'm sure it will surprise you. How much? 20, I said. No. 10%? Two. Between three and five. Three and five percent of the Italian people, like in 1861, I think there were like 29 million people in Italy, and three to five percent of the people actually spoke, uh, spoke and understood in all of Italy, not only in Florence. And illiteracy was also a great problem in Sicily. Uh, in, in the 1900s, people were mostly illiterate. They, they would say 90, at one point, there may be 90%, 90% illiterate, meaning you can read or write. And only in, in the 1920s did the, that figure go up to maybe 50%. Still, it is a very high percentage. Nowadays, everybody speaks Italian. Everybody speaks Italian in a, correctly or more or less because they have been they have watched TV they watch uh, they listen to the radio and everything is in in Italian but in the 1900 nobody practically no one spoke in Italian but Sicilian, Sicilian was the only one the only language that they knew and the only language that it was a verbal language I, I can tell you one little story about how Sicilians learn uh, catechism. Uh, they learn it by heart. The priests of, in Sicily had books which were written in Italian for them and in Sicilian for the Sicilians. And the Sicilians never saw the catechism written. They only heard it and they learned it by heart. Mm -hmm. So that gave the idea that Sicilians somehow a Sicilian is, a, is an oral language, which is not true. Uh, yeah, I, I've spent uh, I've spent uh, uh, most of my career translating uh, Sicilian poetry into English. I've done Meli, Giovanni Meli. I don't know if you've ever heard of Giovanni Meli. Obviously, Giovanni Meli is the most famous Sicilian poet of all time. He was born in 1740, died 1815, and I've translated. Uh, uh, most of his works, I also did a, a critical edition of his lyrical poems, the first one. I'm supposed to do three, three volumes of uh, his lyrical poems, but he is, he was the greatest Sicilian poet of all time. And he's not well known now. During his lifetime, he was actually better known than most of the others. He would have been, if he had written in Italian, he would have been one of the major writers, one of the major poets of Italy, together with, you know, uh, 
Marini or, or others. Well, uh, very good. Uh, uh, we're That's... running out of time. Let's go around the, the Zoom room and uh, ask questions. Um, who wants to be first? <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, the Floridian. Yes. I got uh, the on my screen. Go ahead. Ciao. Um, I was at the SACA meeting that you uh, spoke um, Sicilian, and it was the most beautiful version of Sicilian I had ever heard. I've only heard the dialect from my aunts and uncles. But my question is, um, I've heard that there is not a future tense in Sicilian. You have to work around it. It's not like the future tense in English or um, uh, Italian. If can you answer that quickly? <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, actually, there is a future tense in Sicilian, but it's not, it's not used too much. Uh, oh. In poetry, Meli, for example, uses it all the time. But in actual Sicilian, uh, spoken Sicilian, most people mm -hmm. will use, for example, it, in, like, but that's the same thing as in Italian or Neapolitan. Uh, Leonardo Sciascia said that Sicilians are a pessimistic people and to prove that, he said, they don't even have a future tense. It's a, it's a lie. Okay. <laughs> they do have a, a future tense, but uh, they don't use it. For example, say, domani vado a, 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 a scuola. You can say that in Italian, it's not future tense. But the idea, yeah. uh, also the idea of having to, you say, ayo a giri domani, o ayo a fare una cosa. I will have to do. Uh, I have to do something. So they use different uh, techniques uh, okay. to express the future tense, either by an ad ad adverb or whatever. But we do have it. Um, I, you probably never heard the word faroju, faroju, which is the no. future tense of fare. Instead of fare, faro, in Italian they will add something at the end. So faroju, uh, but it's, it's archaic and nobody uses it. I've tried to learn Italian for 25 years and I will either conquer the language or <laughs> die trying. <laughs> I'll try learning Sicilian. Okay. <laughs> I'm not that young. <laughs> I don't oh, have that no. many years. <laughs> my book, you really should have a copy of my book. So learn Sicilian, it has it has, uh, it's, it's a very funny book in that sense. It gives you a lot of culture, but at the same time, it has a DVD that, can, that tells you, gives you the answers. Uh, once you try it yourself, it'll, you can actually test it. There's about 400, 400 uh, pieces of, of recording uh, that give you the answers to all the questions in the book. And I've I said, tried, it's very successful. I've tried and I did learn Bedu. <laughs> well, Here's the book if, if you and, the book and the uh, CD. Grazie. Well, that's that's uh, that go that comes with the book. That See. comes with the book. It's a it's a little booklet by itself, but the grammar contains the sounds of Sicilian, which, by the way, is unique. It's a it's yes. the first one of its kind. Oh, uh, okay, let's move to Carla. So I just want to say such a great pleasure um, to hear you speak. I want to ask one quick question about um, Andrea Camilleri, who just passed away, and his masterful use of Sicilian in his uh, detective novels with Montalbano. I was wondering if you have had a chance to read the English translations, which are by an Italian-American, Stephen Sartarelli, and really? if you had any... <laughs> How do you think he did? I mean, I think he had a monumental task in trying to convey not only the language, but the, but the, the cultural context that kind of goes with right, it. I, right, right, yeah. That is the subject of, uh, of an article that I just published in Italics. It's called Traducendo. Uh -huh. No, it's called the tra Translating Camilleri into English. Oh, okay. How do you translate Camilleri into English? And uh, it, that will answer your question. The question is, you really can't. <laughs> you really can, but I give, I give, uh, I write it down. It's, it, it, italics, it was published uh, this uh, two weeks ago. 
two weeks ago in Italics magazine. And it's uh, online now, Italics, right? Italic, it, italics uh, is published online. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you put italics.com or italics on, on the internet, you'll find it and you'll see it. It was published about two or three weeks ago in English. And there's also an Italian version, which as I explained before, uh, contains a lot of errors. So don't, don't go to the Italian one, go to the English. Uh, which basically tells uh, how difficult is it to translate uh, Tamil Nadu. It's really almost impossible. Sartarelli does a good job of, of, of doing uh, translation. You get the facts, but you get only one voice. Yes. When in fact, uh, there's multi voices in the, in the book itself. So it, he turns uh, a, a a multimedia thing into a monovocal uh, performance. Okay, let's. I did also on. one for French. Yeah. Uh, there was also uh, another uh, translation from the French, and he does the same thing. Mm -hmm. Thank he you. Does the same thing. Okay, let's move on to Dino Di Martino. Okay. Well, I don't have any questions, uh, but uh, I was born in Sicily, and it's a pleasure uh, to meet uh, Professor Cipolla and to dispel the notion that Sicilians are pessimistic, I wanna say that better days are ahead of us. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> okay, but we don't hey, have a future chance. By the way, uh, by the way I have, a, I have a, an article called, Do Sicilians Have a Sense of Humor? Which I probably, I can send to you, which is the idea in America, people think that we are really like mafia men, like uh, the, always with, uh, with the lips turning, turning down. We, and we can't laugh at ourselves or we don't have a sense of humor. And I try to say to, I try to say basically that Sicilians do have a sense of humor. In fact, they are the ones who invented comedy. Epicarmus was the man who actually was credited by Aristotle for inventing comedy wow. as, as an art form. Okay. And many of the conversations begin with and then there's the rest of the sentence. <laughs> well, my point is that Sicilians do have a sense of humor. And, you know, uh, I can tell you Cicero, the great orators from, from Rome, who lived in Sicily for a few uh, years, said Sicilians are uh, uh, suspicious uh, very smart and suspicious people, and they have a great sense of humor. And in fact, uh, they try to inject humor, even in the most difficult situation. And then he gave, he gave uh, an example of that humor. Do I have time to tell it? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I, we're hanging on. If, if people have to leave, uh, we'll understand. But uh, this, this All right, I'll just tell you a very brief thing, very brief story that Cicero told to show how Sicilians have a, a great sense of humor. There was a man who, who had lost his wife, who had hanged herself on a fig tree in the backyard. And he was there with his, his Sicilian friend and he was berating the tree, this damn tree, uh, this tree, it, it's all the tree's fault. If it weren't there, she would not have done this thing. Uh, and, it was, and, and the poor Sicilian was actually going along with it and being very comfort, comforting. And then he turned around after a, a little while and he said, could I please have a cutting from the <laughs> <laughs> Could I have a cutting from this tree? I want to plant it in my backyard. For a while. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, who's next? Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. Uh, hi, hi. I just, I just want to say both my parents came from Sicily. They were born and raised there. My dad was born in 1894, my mother in 1908. My father had absolutely no education. My mother went to sixth grade and was considered extremely educated. Right. 
And let me tell you that um, about a future, my, my parents always said that you only have today, so you make it the best you can make it in order to have a future. Don't concentrate on the future, concentrate on what's right there in front of you and you'll be much happier. You know, we're not promised it tomorrow, but we have it today, make it good. Great, great for you. And she, uh, one of the uh, donations that we got from uh, Professor Cipolla was this book, and I don't know oh, if yeah. you read it backwards in Mirror, and it's about the uh, La Lingua Italiana nelle scuole di New York. New York. New York. Yeah, yeah, I published the uh, I published that book. Yes, it's I want a copy nice. of that because I'm doing a research um, study on um, Italian education in the United in Chicago. Excuse me, I actually did a comparative study on. Um, uh, the Italian schools and Greek schools in New York, and it's in public. It's going to be published very soon. It's in a, in a book on um, uh, a comparative book on Italian Americans and Greek Americans. Great for you. Congratulations. So I'm I'm very thank you. I've learned so much from you today, and I'm also very interested in finding out more how the Sicil the Sicilian influence in Greece, because we've always taught our kids how we influenced you, and it's so nice to, to well, hear then, then, different then, viewpoints. As I said before, uh, have uh, Dominic uh, prepare a list of all your emails, and I will send uh, uh, the the article on Sicily and Greece. I think wonderful. You enjoy thank it. you so much. Thank well. you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Peter, quick question. About a very fine book, uh, Italy Under the Sea, and uh, if Italy never never uh, emerged from the sea, what, what became of it? What was your idea with that comment? I enjoyed that. Uh, basically, I said my, uh, that was the beginning. That yes. was the question I asked myself. What would, what would the contributions of Italy uh, what would the, the world be if Italy yeah. never came out and all exactly. Italians disappeared? So you would lose a, a hell of a lot of things. I mean, I, it took me 32 little pages to actually say what the thing is. It's mostly funny type of thing. Amazing. Uh, but, uh, you know, all the different contributions, all the different people who have contributed. And culture. Great science, the art, the music, uh, the opera, the scientists, uh, you know, Sicily, Sicily and Italy have contributed so much more than any other country in the world to mm. Western civilization. I thank you. It's all documented in notes because it was, me it was meant to be a lecture uh, to be given, but the, the booklet does have notes that tell you exactly what I'm, what I'm referring to. Yes, yes. Okay, Barbara, quick question. I just want to thank you. I have no questions, but I have a lot of research to do. I made a lot of notes today. Thank you so much. Thanks for you. Great. Okay, Frank. You should all become members of Arbasicula, by the way. It only costs $30 a year, and you get Arbasicula, which is the only journal in Sicilian English. Uh, it's usually uh, a double volume uh, that comes out once a year, of 160, sometimes 200 pages in Sicilian English. And yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's, uh, turn it around, you can see the, the other side, which is the Italian, the Sicilian, Arba Sicilia. So that, and Sicilia Parra, which is a newsletter of 20 pages. In addition, we have, uh, we have uh, news, uh, we have, uh, uh, we publish books of all different kinds, Sicilian cuisine, Sicilian uh, history, whatever. A lot of books. Okay, let's, uh, uh, Frank. Uh, I'm... I have any, I actually don't have any question. It was just, a, it was a very enjoyable. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Danette. Very interesting, and I work for Dominic, so I get to see all the Arbacicola when they come in. So we have a whole shelf of these. So if anyone comes to the library, you're welcome to take a look. And uh, we have Professor Chipola's books as well. So it, it's very interesting. I'm only a quarter Sicilian. And uh, I was in Sicily many years ago and it was a beautiful time. And we had 
I was just a child and we had a wonderful time with our relatives. So I guess now I know where I get my weird sense of humor since it's the ironia <laughs> of the Sicilians. <laughs> Everybody looks at me when I tell the jokes. So I said, I guess I have to change my, my sense of humor. A <laughs> grandfather that I never knew. <laughs> Anybody else who wants to uh, make a comment at this point? Uh, and then uh, now a uh, closing comment from Professor Cipolla. Uh, what's the future look like? Let's hope that this pandemic uh, ends soon. I, I don't, I'm not very uh, sanguine on it. I think uh, we're probably going, going to be suffering for another year. Uh, that's, that's unfortunate because uh, our tours of Sicily have uh, do such a great thing because they, it opens up the world for them. The, the people who come on our tour, there's usually take about 40 people, uh, become really ambassadors of Sicily because they love what they do. They love what they see. Uh, it's like basically, re uh, covering the roots. Many of them actually go see relatives when, when they get there and they can't believe how generous the Sicilian people are. They are. Well, thank yeah. you very much and uh, uh, we'll see you again. If, uh, we, we learned a lot. It was very heartwarming. Take care, Gaetano. Ciao, ciao. It was a lovely to, to see all of you and I'm so glad that you are so interested in Sicilian things. Arrivederci, grazie, complimenti, grazie, professore. Grazie, professore. Grazie a lei. Grazie a lei. Oh, no. Arrivederci. See you no. soon. Professor Candelaro, no. one last thing. No. I've been waiting for il saggio editore on our Wednesday meeting, so I'll take advantage of, uh, seize the opportunity about Professor Cipolla and his Sicilian studies. Is that okay? Sure. Okay. Sure. Arrivederci, goodbye. Ciao. Ciao, Domenico. I'll see you in Chicago. Good.